Yeah, so I'm still on the issue of child um child abuse and I'm just going to slightly divulge um and speak about child abandonment which is actually the practice of relinquishing your interests and claims over your children's lives in an illegal way with the intent of never resuming or asserting guardianship so you know some people they give birth to a child and basically they don't want to know the child after that it's like some animals they give birth to their babies and they eat them i used i forget which animal it was that i used to, i think it's some some animals i think i don't quite remember but what i'm actually trying to say is that not every mother that gives birth to a child is a mother it's just like how you got sperm donors and dads who just sleep with women for the hell of it and as soon as they find out that they're pregnant they take the wings of the morning you know and why i'm actually on this topic really so hard is that it beggars belief that you could actually care for a child you give them everything that they need and that their heart desire and they still feel abandoned they still feel abandoned oh my god in my situation when i was about let me see i was about um 12 12 years old or thereabout yes it must have been because i got baptized at age 13. it was beaten day mom was gonna punish us because something went wrong at home and when something went wrong at home and you ask she asked one person and you couldn't give a reasonable answer everybody get beaten beaten for the one offense because if she can't find the perpetrator she she beat everybody so basically when um when she went to market on saturdays if anybody who was the culprit who caused everybody else to get beaten then we beat that one <laughs> oh growing up days oh my god so you can actually be a part of a family and feel abandoned so i know i run away from home run quickly run but i run straight into pastor's home because i know that mom revered the pastor and she got lots of respect for church so i knew that even if she came around there and i was around there she wouldn't beat me so the first place she came looking for me was the church and so said so done she came and i was there and pastor smith spoke to her and tell her oh miss may don't beat her don't beat her she's a good girl and encourage mom and you know then i was so happy when i hear she said to mom okay let her stay for a while and help karen with her homework pastor had a daughter a granddaughter called karen and i stayed behind and was helping her with her homework and then i offered to comb her hair and oh i forget all about the beating there so then pastor gave me a task that i can always come and help her with her homework during the evening period and help to comb her ear oh my god that was the time of my life so when everybody else at home was doing hard work i used to say to mom mom i'm going up to pastor smith now to comb karen's ear or to help her do her homework <laughs> so that was my way of getting out of um the pickle so to speak and i didn't really feel abandoned because i spent a lot of time at pastors and mom used to bring like if i was there for the weekend she bring lots of groceries and um new clothes and new things so i didn't feel abandoned at, during that period and i got baptized at age 13 but then obviously mom came and I had to go back home because mom said not even post pick kidney kidney I give her them picnic and you know i went back home but i used to i used to look forward to going to pastor's home and believe it or not, I used to make up the bed on the floor under the table. And that's where we would sleep. And we sleep, we enjoy ourselves. We had the time of our lives. In that, in that sitting room there at the front. Yes. Oh my God. And to think that you have a nice, comfortable, warm double bed at home where you can roll from one side to the left. We used to jump spring mattress jump from the from the bed to and touch the roof when mom wasn't in view so 
abandon child abandonment is is not just relinquishing um your entire interest you understand child abandonment is when you say that's it you don't you, you don't want nothing at all to do with the child and that child is just a relic of a bygone era so to speak so this can also include severe cases of neglect and emotional abandonment you know because if you're not attached to the child remind them how you love them and how you care for them and you know sharing their experiences and their daily lives how was your day been what did you do today what did you do at school things like that then the child can feel abandoned yes you have to sort of reassure children my little son he didn't want to stay at home when he was 15 and even though i was giving him everything I, I bought him the latest playstation the latest sneakers i bought him everything but he was just there at home and just wanted the company of his brother and because of that now he he preferred to spend more time with his brother because he find being away from home more exciting than being at home so it doesn't matter what you give a child you could give them the world and they still want to go where it's at or where it's where it's where it's happening so when women on earth have done their best angels in heaven can't do any better you know there's a lot of parents that are here in the uk and abroad many foreign countries that leave their children behind when they traveled abroad back in the 60s and many of them didn't look back many of those parents didn't look back they they travel abroad and they meet a man and they start having british children or american children and they neglect the the older children that they leave back home that is child abandonment when you turn your back on, on the child that you give birth to, that baby that you met for the first time and bonded with and love, how can you forget your child? For years, um, many years and many months when I was here back in the 90s, all I could think about was my children. I work hard, every penny I got, I tried to send it back home, send barrels, buy them, buy the school things, buy everything to send home to make sure that they're happy. But I miss them. And was missing them like crazy. And the happiest time of my life was to go to that airport and collect my children, knowing that they would be in my care indefinitely. You understand? So basically, you know, in it, like I said, it's in the earlier life that this sort of estrangement happened when you don't bond with your children and have that relationship connection where you interact daily or oh, what you did today what was your day like what are your interests what you want to be when you grow up what who are your friends and stuff like that you know i i feel es estranged from my sons nowadays because i most of what's happening in their lives i i i don't know i just speak to them occasionally to find out how they're doing and how my grandchildren are doing but the best years of my children's life was when they were growing up and they were at, were at home with 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 me and i could come and speak to them and you know see how they're doing and stuff like that and when you're not involved in your child life it can in impact on their sort of personal development and it gives them sort of anxiety and depression because like i said my my family members right now they're undergoing a bad time and they feel like they were abandoned because of the fact that their mom was working away from home and didn't weren't they weren't in the same place but they did they didn't stop to look that the mom's providing for them looking after them in every respect apart from just being there they ch ch children want the moms to be there it doesn't matter what the cause but it can't always be 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 that way when in i remember in 1980 onwards when i was in grade 10 and mama to go away and work and leave us we feel we we didn't feel it wasn't the same we i, I well i for one was missing mom and and um used to look forward when she came back on weekend with up with all the goodies yes we, mom wasn't around for a while it gave us freedom to to roam about and my sisters got wild we couldn't control them they were 
uncontrollable start going out to the, the 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 pubs that we call the rum bar playing the ping pong machine oh my god when it's bedtime we couldn't find them one time was looking for judy she she up in the treetop <laughs> my sister joan said come down your girl make a beat out your side yes and and um <laughs> oh my god those days Miss D, she, oh, oh my God, start throwing stones. One of the stones hit me ear. Couldn't beat them anymore because them just roaming wild. Miss can she start smoke. And um, the children just got wild when mom um, went away to work. So you can't win. If mom sit at home with us, then we can't get all the nice things. We can't get all the nice things because it's daddy alone working and it's just daddy work we got good good upbringing we good always have food we we never know hungry we didn't know what hungry was like um growing up yeah but you you can actually feel abandoned with your parents in view never mind when the parents is not in view you understand i don't th think my nieces fully understand Understand what was happening at the time when they were taken into care because they seem content and seem happy and it's just looking back now I can see that they weren't happy and they were really being abused and going through through a bad time so this government need to think twice before taking people children and putting them into placing them into care with people who are pedophile and child abusers and damaging the children damaging them because my nieces their lives will never be the same their lives will never be the same it's gonna take years and lot of therapy and lot of counseling for them to to be restored to their former glory yes so that's why i'm actually pushing this topic i want some form of um redress in terms of what took place with those children while they were in care you know yes it you can't just um decide that you're taking people children and putting them with strangers eh? you don't test the people them to see what are what their histories what a wicked thing to do mm -mm. my heart bleeds my heart goes out for these little young children who are undergoing such trauma and hushed into silence because they're scared to speak out. I'm telling you now, young young people, mothers and young children, you can't speak out because these men are dirty cowards. They are a nasty piece of dirty work, useless, and the women that they have claiming to be their wives, they need to start looking into the type of men that they are marrying, these pedophiles. You understand? How can you take people, children, claiming that you're a care worker and have your big, I can't even describe him, unproductive element of the society, eh? abusing the children? How can you fondle such a young, innocent baby? It's like, it is, it's, it's, it's like molesting a doll. Children are like dumb animals, most of them, because... They're not forward enough to to tell you no because children children have a have a, have a sort of because like my mom used to say children must be seen and not heard so we don't step up we never used to step up to to adults in any way to sort of challenge them is nowadays we are quite vocal because back then children should be seen and not heard you understand me yeah but. Any sort of um, abuse or anything, we were quick to tell mom that that man is a suspect or that man's a suspect. You understand me? There was a man called Mr. James who she revered. That man, I don't know why she think that man was not a pedophile, but he was. He was. You understand me? Yeah. And my sisters had a, had a good run in with him and we really exposed him. Yes. And during those times, big sis decided that she leaving home because she's not putting up with it. And, you know, it's a long story. But 
the bottom line is when you have children you have to sort of find out what they what what is making them stressed out and so depressed talk to your child if you see your child too silent you speak to that child and talk about your experiences you know um what i was going to say is um my lip is a bit dry i should drink some water anyway my experience um it's a long story i don't even think it's it's an appropriate topic to talk about now but to cut it short i don't believe in abortion and when i got fell heavily pregnant back in 1989 i it wasn't planned it 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 wasn't pre-planned it did the, the gentleman concerned was somebody that i quite liked nice gentleman or so he seemed but he was a very he was a vagrant yes the man was a vagrant he imposed on me which i kept telling him no 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 until you know he got the better of me and there i was me and him like, in a slinging wrestling match nine months later my baby was born because when i found out about the pregnancy it was too late and furthermore i wouldn't really do abortion i don't believe in that but like i said it's a long story for another topic and i'm glad that i didn't take the abortion i brought i brought my child um sometimes it must we used to have this thing about gambling raffling raffling the belly <laughs> when you're in one relationship and you come out of that and you start another one that's where problems can occur you can genuinely give a man a jacket you know you can genuinely give a man a jacket and not um realize it because that was december 1989 and then i got involved in a quick in quick succession sort of so to speak and four months later menstrual cycle was still going so there was no n reason to suspect pregnancy and yeah the child was born but many years later it caused problems and i'm thinking did i do the right thing if i done an abortion the baby would be history would be he wouldn't oh god it's it's just heartrending really but Sometimes it's not intentional that parents go out of their way to decide that, oh, I'm going to give this man this child because so and so. It can be circumstances. So I've been the victim of um, a date rape and um, the consequences were not very nice. But there you go. I would never, I would never abandon my baby in any circumstances i will always bring my baby to full term and um make sure that they get a good life because when we have a good time and a baby is conceived that's to me that's a gift from god because a lot of people are trying to to conceive and they can't so i would never find myself conceived and decide to to do away with the child no it's not in my nature i did actually try but i couldn't go ahead with it i could not go ahead with it i went to the place up new kingston and they said it was four thousand dollars at the time and i was to come with two nighties and the relevant um items of clothing to do the abortion and then because of my christian principles i said no way I saw many girls up there that I knew and they said then I said why you want to get rid of a baby and they said because um one girl said her man's coming from America and she was in a relationship and got pregnant so she she's not gonna keep the baby because that will destroy a relationship so people people do these things for different reasons but I wasn't prepared to do it I wasn't prepared to do it so I'm just saying to my family members at this point that what they perceive as abandonment, it's not abandonment. Sometimes, like I say, in Mother Dearest's case, 
she had to work away from home to give us a better life. And I did get a better life because mom paid lots of um, money to, to send me to good school and to give me a good start in life. I got off to a good start. So the ball was in my court to do well. So if I, if I haven't done well in life, it's not for lack of trying on Mother Dearest's part because she made sure... When I got pregnant in 1982 and had my baby in 83, she took him and cared for him. Yes, that's what Mother Dearest did best. She took the baby, cared for him while I went back to Secretarial Institute and, 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 and went back and did the necessary training and graduated. She was one of the proudest mothers in the in the in the audience. I could see her like a Cheshire cat smiling while I collected my certificate. So out of evil come good. I'm very proud. I'm a proud um, grandmother of nine grandchildren today. I'm expecting a, um one in um next month actually. Yes, yeah, so I'll have ten grandchildren in under my wings so you know the christmas list is getting bigger and bigger every day yeah yeah man i've been overwhelmed today because um our uncle Uroy, my cousin's dad you know we grew up around him he used to come to the house regularly and we we had a good relationship with him over over the years when auntie madge was alive and even recently he came to birmingham to do a stage show and I met him at the back and we had a good talk and laugh and whatever. Yeah, man, Uncle Uroy, bless his soul. So it hasn't been a good week for me this week, knowing about my nieces and trying to see if I can get the, the ball running. Yes, get things up and running to see if I can give them sort of some respite from what they're undergoing because they're damaged. The kids are damaged because of what this system did to them. The government need to stop putting people, children into care and putting them with families that they don't examine them and, and, and make sure that they are the right family for the right. It's, it's, if you're going to care for a child, care for a child, no man. Why would you take somebody's child and abuse them like that? Hmm? I used to think it's wicked when they cut men's penis off um, when I used to hear about it. But anybody do that to any family member of mine or any, 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 any human being, they should, they should expect that sort of treatment. Yes, should expect that sort of treatment. Children are innocent, man. You can't hurt them. They're innocent. They look up to us for care and support and guidance. How can we hurt them? It's wicked, man. So I think the system need um the it need a revamp. The, yeah, the system need a revamp. The government need to sort of re-examine and review um these um sort of placement procedures. How they put children into care because right now I've got damaged family members that are crying out crying out emotionally physically mentally psychologically they're damaged because of being placed into care you know so instead of taking the children away from the family members Try, the government need to try everything to try and work with the parents to make sure that the child stay at home, you know, stay at home and become the person that God intended them to be. All right, so it's been my pleasure once more. Tell your friend about this channel. And like I said before, if you know anybody who's affected by child abuse, child neglect, child abandonment, share on this page because... All the signatures and all the views and all the comments will go a long way in terms of supporting um, what, what we're trying to achieve. Because I'm not going to let these children live their lives in misery when it's no fault of their own. 
they didn't ask to be abused. You understand me? And, you know, in the Bible, in Romans 12, it said, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our minds. So at this point in time, I'm sure that when, upon reflection, they'll reflect and they'll understand that what happened to them was wrong. And then they'll take the necessary measures and step to correct it. All right? Thanks for your time. God bless you. Tell your friend about this channel. Keep subscribing. Like, share, subscribe. Alright? Take care. God bless. Bye-bye.